Hydrogen fuel cells could be the future, but surely steaming hydrogen out of natural gas is definitely not the way forwards. Today, I meet a man who is working on a slightly different approach. So Klaus, I, I've heard lots of things about hydrogen. We've already looked at hydrogen fuel cells in yeah. quite a lot of detail okay. on the series. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the big questions that always comes up when we where discuss it, where from? does the hydrogen come from? Exactly. So I believe what you're doing here is finding different ways of, of producing hydrogen. That is exactly right. So what we're doing is we're actually growing these sort of algae here. Yeah. So That's that looks like sort of pond water. It is sort of pond water, right? right? Just, just with higher concentrations of algae, right? right? And there's very specific algae, right. Chlamydomonas reinhardtii, they're called, right. okay? And what they do is they can actually produce hydrogen from water. So we take right. sulfur away from the medium, right. okay? And under these conditions, then they start to produce hydrogen. Because, I mean, hydrogen. all the hydrogen that I've ever come across that hasn't been steamed out of yeah. a fossil mm -hmm. fuel is... Yeah. It's from electrolysis, so it's exactly. putting electricity. So you don't exactly. have to do that at all. We well, don't have to do that wow. at all. No, it's just sunlight. I mean, we're we're mimicking now here sunlight with the LEDs and so right. forth. But um, you could do that outdoors. You know, something like 100 watts per square meter. That's oh, so it's kind of ambient daylight rather yeah. than direct exactly. forcing exactly. sunlight. That's right. why you can have these reactors vertical rather than horizontal. Right. Yeah. Because right. they still get enough light through stray lighting right. yeah, to do the job. If, you, if it's effectively <coughs> driven by sunlight, yeah. can it operate? overnight because <laughs> that's one of those things I mean you know is it going to switch off when the right. sun goes down um, yes right <laughs> yes <laughs> that's not like like most like no sort of renewable systems yeah. that, that rely on sunlight but, in, you it, have but, but if you're producing enough hydrogen in the day uh, exactly. you can store that at least that, that, is, that, that to, to, to keep exactly. you running overnight you'll, you'll have a hydrogen storage system yeah. right that's why research into hydrogen storage is also important right. of course so that you can smooth out you know all these operations right. the only other important thing uh, to mention about algae is of course that because we're building up biomass that biomass has to come from somewhere so the sunlight provides the energy yeah. and the algae take up the co2 because they're essentially mini plants right so they take the co2 so they're absorbing co2 as they well they absorb the co2 right. and from the co2 and water and the energy of the sun they're building up those hydrocarbons and, and the proteins right. and the carbohydrates that they're composed of. So from the point of view of, uh, if we're, say, capturing carbon yeah. effectively from yeah. a traditional power stations, mm -hmm, could, you, could that, carbon, that carbon gas be used in this process? I mean, yes. is there a way of it using could be, that? It could be directly sort of pumped in. They right. love it, right? Uh, algae actually thrive on, on CO2. Right. Yeah? So that is a potential use for that what yes. is at the moment a kind of problematic waste gas that exactly. we don't want in the atmosphere. That is exactly you could use right. it directly yeah. for making yeah. electricity and yeah. absorbing CO2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But from that then you can extract the hydrogen, yeah. pressurise it and store it and do exactly. whatever you want with it. Well you can right. actually pressurise even the system itself a little bit. Right. Yeah? So that's an easier way also to get the hydrogen out of the system. Right. Yeah? So you and you can directly interface that with, with a fuel cell then. Right. I yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you can run it directly through a fuel cell, then, the and fuel then you've got cell, energy yeah. coming from the fuel exactly. cell. Exactly, because that's wow. a very pure hydrogen that we're producing. Right. right. So the, the so the notion then is to create something that is akin to mm -hmm. a power station, yeah. where, which has basically exactly. got some yeah. little microbe fellas yeah. in, in a fluid yeah. and electricity coming out the other end. That's that's the idea. Exactly. Right. So, so it, you would have a sort of big big rooftop installation. Yeah. Right where you let them grow for a while, then they produce hydrogen, and right. you extract the hydrogen and run your fuel cells. Right. Hmm? So has, yeah. has anybody developed a, a scaled up version of it yet? No, not right. yet, not yet. I so think that, that's something that, that we're still working on because one, one big issue is how do you scale up these reactors? Yeah. We, have, we have done the, the, the economics, the costing and right. so forth, where, but, but it's, it's a matter of scaling up the reactors and trying to make them as cheap as possible. Right. Exactly. Is it really possible to charge your car in a second and drive 1,000 miles? Join me next week when we take a look at supercapacitors.